Mr. Chairman, uh, once again, we hear an effort to reinvent January 6th, this time as uh, people uh, expressing peacefully their disagreements with the government. January 6th was not a peaceful expression of differences with the government. It was a massive, violent attack on the Capitol with the effort to, with the object of overturning a free and fair election. Uh, Mr. Jordan cut off debate on my amendment to hold him in contempt, so we couldn't discuss what his role was, why he was subpoenaed, uh, and whether he should be held to the same standard as a private citizen. And while he said quite erroneously that he was uh, not required to testify, either because he took issue with the object of the investigation or because the speech and debate clause is Representative Lofgren pointed out, that does not apply to subpoenaing a member of this body. Let's remember who did step forward, and let's ask ourselves not why he was compelled and refused, but why he didn't volunteer to come forward, why he was unwilling to share his information, why it was even necessary to subpoena him. After all, so many others did their constitutional duty. Republican Speaker in Arizona, Rusty Bowers, talked about how he was compelled by his oath, by his faith, by the Constitution to do his constitutional duty to refuse the former president's entreaties to overturn the election. And he showed his devotion to our country and the Constitution by coming and testifying. Jim Jordan would not. Brad Raffensperger, the Republican Secretary of State in Georgia, did his constitutional duty both to protect the vote in Georgia, to ignore the former president's demands that he find 11,780 votes that didn't exist, but also to come and testify to share with the country what he knew, but not Jim Jordan. Cassidy Hutchinson, a staff member at the White House, showed extraordinary courage to come forward, showed her devotions to her country and constitution and came forward and testified, but not Jim Jordan. Capitol Police officers who were beaten and gouged that day, they came forward and testified, but not Jim Jordan. White House counsel, Republican White House counsel came forward and testified, but not Jim Jordan. Unless we forget why the committee wanted Jim Jordan, let's look at our referral to the Ethics Committee over his failure to come forward for guide as to why we wanted his testimony. Representative Jordan was a significant player in President Trump's efforts, we wrote. He participated in numerous post-election meetings in which senior White House officials, Rudy Giuliani and others, discussed strategies for challenging the election. Chief among them claims that the election had been tainted by fraud. On January 2nd, 2021, Representative Jordan led a conference call in which he, President Trump, and other members of Congress discussed strategies for delaying the January 6th joint session. During that call, the group also discussed issuing social media posts, encouraging President Trump's supporters to march to the Capitol on January 6th. An hour and a half later, President Trump and Representative Jordan spoke by phone for 18 minutes. Yes, we wanted him to come testify about what he discussed with President Trump for 18 minutes. And no, Jim Jordan has never told this body why he was unwilling to tell the country about that conversation in the run-up to a violent attack on the U.S. Capitol. or why he spoke with White House staff about, as we wrote, the prospect of presidential pardons from members of Congress. He was unwilling to say why he thought pardons from members of Congress might be necessary. And today, he's unwilling to tell us why there should be a different standard for a member of Congress who is subpoenaed than for a private citizen and why the standard for a private citizen should be so much higher. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle say, that's not a germane question. We love to hide behind germaneness when we really don't want to answer the root of the matter. And the root of the matter is, why is Hunter Biden's failure to appear worthy of a criminal contempt, but the chairman of the Judiciary Committee's unwillingness to comply with a congressional subpoena gets nothing more than a shrug. That's really the question before this committee today. And so far, there is no answer. I yield back.